The next topic we are going to discuss is a very common valve pathology. It's aortic valve stenosis. In case of aortic valve stenosis, the quantification seems relatively straightforward most of the times, but there are some situations where it's not that easy. So let us begin with the principle of aortic stenosis. It's basically what goes in must go out. So what enters the ventricle has to leave the ventricle at some point. And here you can see a normal example. So in this case, you see the systolic blood pressure. It's 120 millimeters of mercury in the ventricle, which is also then displayed in the arterial system, which you can also measure. The diastolic blood pressure in the ventricle is relatively low. So is the pressure in the left atrium. The, of course, the diastolic blood pressure in the peripheral arteries is higher. What happens in aortic stenosis? Well, there is aliasing in this area because the valve is very tight. The pressure in the ventricle rises to very high degrees, therefore leading to hypertrophy of the ventricle. Also, the diastolic pressures, of course, rise and left atrial pressures do so too. So, when aortic stenosis is present, the outflow of the ventricle is blocked. So pressures have to rise to keep a certain degree of blood pressure and stroke volume still going throughout the body. Let me start with a case. It's Greta. Greta enters on a Sunday morning, 9 a.m. in the morning in the emergency department. She's 85 years old and she has dyspnea when she just walks a few steps. So New York Heart Association class three. She also complains of chest pain when she's walking, while she's walking. Overall, she has no medication and no medical history because, as she states, I have never been to a doctor in my life. Well, what's the problem of Greta? We take a point of care ultrasound device and we image a peristernal long axis view with, in this case, and without color Doppler. What we can appreciate is that the right ventricle is over here, the interventricular septum, the inferolateral wall, the descending aorta, the mitral valve, the anterior and the posterior leaflet, and in the center of the image is the aortic valve. And what you immediately can see is that the aortic valve is severely calcified. When you add color doppler, you see turbulent flow, but also a little bit of aortic regurgitation. But note that here at the area where the opening should happen is very turbulent flow and also afterwards, after the stenotic part. So what we think the main problem is of Greta is that there's aortic stenosis present. Why is there aortic stenosis? Well, the etiology differs compared to a younger or an older age group. People around or below 70 years, they have very often a bicuspid valve, which is responsible for the stenosis with a congenital defect, so to speak. 25% is rheumatic and only 18% have a degenerative aortic stenosis. When we look at the age group above 70 years, almost 50% have a degenerative cause, especially in higher income countries where people age, we will see the degenerative aortic stenosis very frequently. The bicuspid valve and rheumatic heart disease is not that present or prevalent anymore. Why echocardiography then? Well, echocardiography is the key to diagnosis. We need flow and measurements of flow and the visual assessment, which you can both assess with echocardiography. There is also stress echo, so low dose dopamine stress echo, which you can additionally use. You can use CT coronary angiography and calcium scoring in case of an unclear situation, but we will talk about that in a later stage. Contrast in echocardiography can also be used not per se for the valve or the flow, but for finding out if there is an additional problem or to quantify left ventricular function. And also strain imaging definitely already has its place in evaluating valve disease. There are several pitfalls you have to remember. Well, first, the heart rate. We do not want tachy or bradycardic patients in atrial fibrillation. You have to measure several heartbeats because not automatically the highest measured velocity is the velocity to go. 
And you also have to avoid hypertension because hypertension increases afterload or therefore affects the aortic valve and the measurements of the aortic valve. And now let's talk about numbers. When there is no stenosis present, we have a mean pressure gradient below 10 millimeters of mercury. Then you definitely know there is no relevant aortic or no stenosis present at all. An aortic valve area in between three to four square centimeters, the area we calculate with the continuity equation, then there's also no stenosis present and the maximal velocity is around one meter. So overall 0.5 to 1.5 meters per second. How do we start? Well, of course, we start as always in echocardiography with a peristernal long axis view. If you want to find out more about the peristernal long axis view, click the box and go back to the videos specifically dealing with this topic. Why do we use the peristernal long axis view? Well, we have here the aortic valve in the center of our image and we have the differentiation in between the right coronary and non-coronary or left coronary cusp seen over here and we do get a glimpse of the left ventricle and other surrounding structures. Furthermore, you should scan a peristernal long axis view with a specific focus on the aortic valve and the LVOT seen over here. With this focus, it's way easier to measure the LVOT because that's very difficult sometimes because the LVOT has to be measured directly before the valve, but not too far into the left ventricle. And actually it has to be measured where you place the pulse wave Doppler sample to measure the velocity of the LVOT, so the left ventricular outflow track, which is located over here. In this more detailed view, again, you can see the right coronary and the non or left coronary cusp. Moving on from the focused view of the peristernal long axis to Erna. Erna had a severe aortic stenosis five years ago. So when she was 70, now she's 75 and she was asymptomatic. She even went hiking. She has hypertension and too high blood fatty acids. And she did not go to a follow-up appointment or to an echocardiographic appointment. So what we're evaluating now is Erna because now she has the problem that she cannot breathe. Why is that? First, we will take a look at the peristernal long axis view with a focused view of the aortic valve. And in this case, we always have to record this focused view, as mentioned earlier, because you can nicely visualize the LVOT, so the left ventricular outflow tract, so that's the cavity of the left ventricle, and this is the left ventricular outflow tract, and the aortic valve. And what we can appreciate is that the aortic valve is severely calcified. So there is only a little bit of movement left seen over here. Overall, it is severely calcified. Well, in this view, you can also measure the LVOT properly with the focused view. You have really the entire LVOT in at least two heartbeats in your field of view. With the LVOT diameter, it's sometimes very difficult because it has a great measurement error if you measure wrong. So if you're off a few millimeters, the measurement of the aortic valve area calculated by the aortic valve area measurement with the continuity equation differs greatly because one millimeter of measurement error equals 0.1 square centimeters. So that is a problem. And very often you cannot see the LVOT so clearly as in this case, because you have to measure inner to inner edge, so from the inside of the LVOT to the inside of the LVOT. You should measure parallel to the aortic valve and if you are not entirely in the optimal position to visualize the LVOT, it looks a bit blurred or you do have a little bit of additional tissue seen over here. Also artifacts because of the calcified valve, so it's sometimes very difficult. And you should measure in mid-systole. Mid-systole with this valve, it's very hard to interpret. So you also have to take a look at the ECG and then measure ECG guided and guided with the aortic valve in mid-systole optimally. Now we can ask ourselves with Erna, when we see those images, this is not a normal peristernal long axis view where you have the LV cavity, the 
hypertrophied left ventricle, the right ventricle, the left atrium, the mitral valve, and the aortic valve here in the center. And here the color Doppler information, if this is truly aortic stenosis, and if so, if this is truly a severe aortic stenosis. As she was diagnosed already five years before, of course, that is a hint, but also when we only take a look at this image, with this severe calcification, the opening of the aortic valve is severely reduced and therefore it has to be a relevant aortic stenosis. Given color Doppler information, we do see that there's a little flare showing aortic regurgitation, but here the aliasing and the turbulent flow after the aortic valve to provide visual information that this is truly a relevant aortic stenosis.